Hi there, this is Chris from Moto Legend, the chap in the cap. Here today to talk to you about a proper adventure riding suit from Swedish brand Halvarsons. I'm going to be joined in a minute by my young colleague Billy. We're going to walk through the suit and all of its details. But this basically is the Halvarsons Aman. It comes in other colorways, coming later on in 2020 in an all black color. Not sure how we feel about that, but it will be coming in a more sober, less adventure colorway than this. Clearly, it is an adventure suit. It is designed for adventure riding. That does not mean it's designed for adventure bikes. A lot of people end up with a suit like this because they've gone out and bought an adventure bike. So you go along to your BMW dealer, you order a GS, you get the big metal panniers, you've got knobbly tires, you feel you're obliged to get an adventure suit to go with it, maybe a, um, a helmet with a peak as well. But if most of your riding is done in the UK, if you are going to be commuting on your big GS, then this is not the kind of suit you want. This suit is an adventure suit for a particular reason. The main reason being that you can pull out the waterproof membrane. It unzips. Now, when you unzip it, your body can breathe much better. So it's designed for conditions where either you're traveling somewhere very hot, up in the 30 degrees, 40 degrees, your body needs to breathe. So it can't breathe as well if there's a waterproof membrane in a jacket. So you take the membrane out, you can breathe much better. The jacket can also vent much better. So the cool air or the cooler air can come in and keep you cool as well. So this is designed for certain conditions. It is not necessarily the best jacket if you want to commute in the UK or ride through the winter in the UK. Just going back to the waterproofing issue, which we often talk about here, there are three different forms of waterproofing in a motorcycle jacket. There's drop liner, there's laminate, and there's removable. Very, very briefly, drop liner, out of fabric, waterproof membrane here. Works perfectly well, 95% of jackets are made like that, but in extreme conditions, water can come in the outer fabric, swill around, won't reach the body because it can't get through the membrane, but it can make you feel a little bit cold, can make the, the jacket heavy with, with rain, and it takes a long while to dry. Superior version of waterproofing, the best version, the most technical version is laminate, where you take the, the membrane, you bond it or heat seal it onto the outer fabric. Like that, the water can't get into the outer fabric, it stays drier for longer, dries out very quickly. The third method of waterproofing is this version, where you have a waterproof that is removable. Now, it works perfectly fine, but you suffer some of the issues of a drop liner garment because obviously when it rains, water can still come in that outer fabric and it can become very heavy with, with rain, can make you feel cold, takes a long while to dry out and so on. But in some ways, this is the worst system if your priority is staying dry because water can wick through the zips. In a drop liner jacket, you have all of the seams are taped, so water can't pass through them. But in this jacket or in a jacket like this, in an adventure jacket with a removable wa waterproof, when the jacket itself gets wet, there's lots of water swilling around, it can pass through the zip, wick through the zip and reach the body. So these jackets are great. They perform a function, but if you are looking to commute through the winter, through a wet and cold and miserable British winter, this is not the kind of suit that you necessarily want. So now we're gonna go on. I'm gonna talk through the details with it with Billy, and we'll come back to some of these issues, but we will explain exactly what this suit is and what it does so well. Okay, so I'm here with young Billy from, from the shop. Let's talk you through the jacket top to bottom. Um, First thing, storm collar. I'm going to mention the storm collar first because Billy is very desperate to take it off. Um, it works re really well. It absorbs the rain. If it's raining and water's coming down your helmet, it will stop it being absorbed. And so it will absorb it and stop it running into the jacket. Obviously, if it's cold, it's um, going to protect your neck. So Billy, if you want to get, that, get rid of that, just one word of advice. If you have one of these and take it off, do not lose it because Halvarsons can never supply a replacement. Okay, so the main feature of this jacket, as I've mentioned, is the fact that it has a removable waterproof inner, both the jacket and the trousers. There's also within this suit a fairly lightweight, but still um, effective thermal liner. So 
in essence, this is what we have. When you take it out, this outer layer is the waterproof layer. And then inside that zipped into it is a thermal uh, full, full sleeve length jacket made with a material called Innerborn, which is uh, an equivalent to Thinsulate. Halvarsons reckon it's better than Thinsulate, but of course they would. But I would say that this is not a full on winter thermal lining, but if you are going somewhere and it's a wee bit ch chilly, then that will do a reasonable job. In terms of the suit, um, a standard polyamide outer. As ever with Halvarsons, what they do, they have a material they call high art. It's an anti-abrasion material. It's like a Kevlar. Oh, sorry. It's not like a Kevlar, but it does the same job as Kevlar. So they put that in all the high impact areas or the high abrasion resist areas, such as the shoulders, the elbows, and so on, down the front, areas where you might ever expect to slide, they put this high art material that increases the strength of the fabric by 500%, so times six. But as ever, they use it in an intelligent way. Some people just make a very heavy, stiff jacket, but what these guys do, they put that where they need it, so it enables them to have a jacket or pants that are quite light, quite flexible, very easy to wear, but in extremis, they are also pretty strong too. Um, here on the shoulders, you've got a material, uh, again, another anti-abrasion um, um, element. It's not super fabric. It looks like super fabric. I would suggest it's designed to look like super fabric, but it's not. But you've got that on the shoulders and the elbows. Um, going through the jacket, one of the things is, I've mentioned about the cooling effect. A jacket like this, classically, an adventure jacket has lots of big vents. So when you've taken the waterproof membrane out and the thermal layer out, then the air is going to flow really well into this. So you've got two large pockets on the chest. They're going to help you stay cool. Um, you've got pockets here and pockets down here. The jacket fits, by the way. You, know, you can't tell with, with, with Billy because he's a skinny run, and I think, I think we've tightened this jacket up. But the jacket fits a little bit more loosely than some jackets. It is for adventure riding, and the idea is you're going to be up on the pegs. You're going to be moving around a lot. You do not want a tight-fitting jacket. So this jacket, on many people, fits a little bit loosely. Not, I would say, as loose as, say, the Klim Badlands, which is a really boxy fit. But the idea is that the legs are a little bit wider on this. The jacket's just a little bit looser. Um, so, but what we have here, and it's a feature we have on a number of Halvarsons jackets, it's really nice. It means that we can tailor it to make it fit you. So we've got a bit more room there, but we can tighten it up, make sure it's nice and snug, doesn't kind of flap around in the wind. You've also got adjusters here on the waist. You've got a, um, a storm flap down, down here, so that's going to... Having said that this isn't the most effective jacket in the rain, it's going to be fine in, in an hour or, two or two's rain. It's great. I think my point was in really heavy rain, um, this is not necessarily the best uh, solution. Um, in terms of venting, we've also got on the back here, we've got um, a permanently open exhaust vent. We've got stretch panels here for articulation on, on the bike, just makes it easier to move around. We've got reflective panels here and here. Um, so. The other element of protection, obviously, is the impact protectors. Alvarsons use their own armor. Uh, it is not a D3O. In truth, if I were being critical, it's a little bit clunky and old fashioned. At times, we find that we can make a Halvarsen suit a little bit more comfortable by putting someone else's armor in, but it is the highest level two armor. So you've got that, obviously, in the shoulders and the elbows. Halvarsons have their own back protector. We don't like it, and what we've done, we've amended a D3O back protector sewn Velcro into it. So when anyone buys a Halvarsen suit, this suit or any other, we would normally put in the D3O protector instead. Um, so I think that's, so I'm not quite, quite finished. The trousers, a um, little bit disappointed, I have to say, with the vents on the legs. Maybe Halvarsen's felt that the main place you needed to get cool air is on the chest, and that is true. This is where your core is. When you're on the bike and working hard, this is the bit that you want to cool down. But we had, in previous versions of this pant, we'd had much bigger vented panels there. So we've got slight zips here, um, or small zips here. It's not the best vented trouser we've come across. Um, but again, the details, you've got reflectors on it. You've got level two armor in the knees and the hips. This trouser, unfortunately, doesn't come in a short or a long leg. But actually, we found that 
to a greater extent than with some of Helvarsson's other jackets, it's not such a problem. And that's because normally you're going to wear a suit like this with a, an adventure boot with a taller boot. So someone like Billy might normally want a longer leg trouser. Billy, how tall are you? About 6'1". Six 6'1". One. Six one. Yeah. So an inch or so um, more than me. So he's got longer legs. He would normally want a longer trouser. But if you jump on the bike here, here Billy. Now that normally with a commuting suit, we would say, no, you need a longer leg. But in that the boots finishes here, we don't care on an adventure suit if it sits a wee, wee bit short because you've got pl plenty of coverage there. If it does rain, it's not going to come over the top of the boot. So with a taller boot, a shorter leg is certainly acceptable. The converse is that if you are really short of leg, sometimes this trouser can be too long. And occasionally we find that it is just too long. There's not a lot we, we can do about it. There's not a lot of adjustments we can do here. Um, we can maybe occasionally get an inch off there, but not much more. But if you're sat on an adventure bike, there's often a, a longer rise, so if you are short, there's a, a bigger re reach to the pegs. Sometimes this suit works better than you might think when you're sat, when you're here, here in the show, showroom. So we always have an adventure bike here, so if the trousers look too long, we'll just go around, around the back, we'll sit, sit you on the adventure bike. But more so than with other trousers, we find that the need for a long leg and a short leg is, is less important. Now, at the beginning I did in some ways disparage this suit as a suit that you could wear all year round. We have a lot of customers who come in with a suit like this. They've bought it under false pretenses. They bought it because it matched the bike and they're commuting in it. And it is not really designed to do that. But there is an extent to which you can make this suit work all year round. If you go for something like a, um, a laminate suit, let's say a Klim laminate suit that looks like this, it's a build as a, an adventure suit. The fact is that even though you've got good vents, you've got a permanent waterproof membrane. That suit is never going to be really effective in hot weather because when the temperatures are up in the 30s and the 40s, when you're working hard, if you're crossing Morocco or in Africa or India, the last thing you want is a laminated membrane or a membrane of any sort. So in those kinds of conditions, a suit like this is better. So with this suit, when you take the, the membrane out, you unzip it, you have a piece of motorcycle apparel that is perfect for hot weather. Now, if you want to wear this in the cold, the thermal layer that comes with this is not fantastic, so we would probably discard that. But if you took something like um, Rucker's Downex jacket, or even in extremis you went for an electric jacket, electrically heated jacket, you would then have something that you could equally wear in the colder months. In terms of waterproofing, what we would do, we would not wear the waterproof on the inside. In some ways, it just makes more sense to wear a waterproof on the outside. If we then took this suit and put a Scott waterproof on the outside, you have created, in effect, a result that is better than laminate. With a laminate, water can't get in, but it still wets the outer surface. If you wear a waterproof on the outside, then this cannot get wet at all. So you can have a jacket and you can have a, have a pant. You could ride in extreme rain. When it stops raining, you take it off. The suit that you're wearing doesn't need to dry out because it's bone dry. So even though this suit is designed pretty much exclusively for hot weather riding, it's not perfect for winter riding, if you are prepared to supplement it with a high quality thermal liner and wear a waterproof over the top, and we know that that's a bit of a pain, but if you're prepared to do that, this is actually a great foundation for a suit that you can wear all year round. It doesn't do it out of the bag, as it were, out of the box, but if you are prepared to have on the bike some waterproofs in your panniers and have a better thermal solution, then this is the one suit or the kind of suit that you could take and then wear in absolutely every condition. So that's it. It's the Halvarsen's Oman suit. Um, it's, I don't know the price, so I'm going to get someone to run one of those little things along the bottom of the page that says Chris is an idiot and he's forgotten the price, but we'll tell you the price. As I mentioned, um, there's one coming through in black. They did have another colorway, a uh, sandy color with orange high-vis. That is pretty much sold out. Um, so this is the main color for 2020 with the black one arriving soon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed our review of the Halvarsen Zaman adventure suit. If you visited the website motolegends.com, you'll see we've got lots of other adventure-related gear. 
If you particularly like this suit and want to get more information about it, and who knows, maybe even buy one, then if you click on the button top right, that will take you right to the relevant page on the website. Just a bit of information about buying from us. Postage and packing is always free, as are returns if you change your mind. Um, in terms of the pricing, we will always be the cheapest. Now, our price promise, as it were, is not just a price match, it's a price beat. So if anything we sell is, if you find it cheaper elsewhere, we will beat their price by 10%. So if we're selling a jacket for 500 pounds, you find someone selling it for 450, then our price will be 405. The terms and conditions are fairly straightforward, but there are a few, so if you want more details, visit the website. If in the future you would like to receive email bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the top of the front page of the website, there's a piece of script there that says newsletter sign up, it takes a couple of seconds, then you'll receive all of our email bulletins in the future about new products as they come into the building. If you would prefer to get your information about new products videographically like this, then we would be delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that on the button down below. Finally, of course, we're also a shop. Now, you may be seen in this video, you might have seen bits of the, the shop. It's not a huge shop, but actually attached to the shop is a warehouse with three floors of gear. We have more than two million pounds worth of stock here in the building. So technically, we are actually, despite appearances, the second largest shop in the UK. Benefits of coming here are manifold. We can get the size right. We've got huge amounts of stock. Let's say you came in to try this adventure suit and it wasn't quite right for you. We can look at adventure suits from Klim. We can look at adventure suits from, from Rucker. It's, it's going to be far easier and far swifter to get it right if you come and visit us than if you do it by mail order. You try one, it doesn't fit, you send it back and, and so on. So there are benefits in coming here. We'll also make sure that we fit it. We sit you on the bike. We make sure that the knee armor works we will make sure that you do not leave here until things are as they should be. Uh, we're based in Guildford, uh, on the edges of Guildford in Surrey, very easy uh, connections from London. So if you do want to try this suit on and get it right, or indeed any suit on and get it absolutely right first time, come and see us. Anyway, this has been Chris at Moto Legends. I look forward to talking to you again soon.